Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Mike James, Maple Maniac. And guys, we're doing a walkthrough of the gardens here at Maplewood Gardens. It's Memorial Day. We're walking around here at the gardens at Maplewood Gardens at my parents' home and garden. We started planting a lot of these plants around 2006 in the ground. My dad planted some of these Japanese maples in the early 1980s. And so guys, there's some really old Japanese maples here. The majority of these plants, Matt and I came back and planted later on in the early 2000s. But these trees are, been here for quite a while. We got some frost damage in April, so you'll see a little bit of that around. But a lot of this has started to grow out because these plants have had some time to recuperate. But guys, smash that like button. And as always, remember to shop on MrMaple.com. We had 10 new plants every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Maniac, you ready to go in the garden? Oh, let's go, man. I'm ready. First time here. So, you know what this one is? I think that's a lion's head maple. Shishi Gashira? It is a Shishi Gashira. And the Shishi Gashira is super heat tolerant Japanese maple, classic Japanese maple from the 1700s. Easy to grow. Yeah. I mean, these things are bulletproof. I've got a cousin in Columbia, South Carolina. She had one of these put out in full sun, didn't take care of it, and it thrived and did well. And that's how you know, you know, it, it's a hardy tree is when my cousin who has a black thumb can grow one of these yeah. in full sun yeah. and high heat. But yeah, I just I love the uh, the layered type foliage on it, uh, slow growth rate. It just it just it looks crazy. Man. So you got one of these in your garden? I don't. I don't. I need one though. Oh man, how do you not have a shishi gashira? I, I don't. I don't. It's a it's a classic. You see this one coming up over here? I think that's a Makawa Yatsubusa. Is that right? It is. It is. This Makawa Yatsubusa here is really large for a typical Makawa Yatsubusa. I mean, typically you're talking four feet in 15 years. This one's approaching every bit of what, eight feet? Eight, eight, eight to maybe nine feet. We planted this one about 2002. And when we planted it, it was already about this big. Uh, okay. So it was already a, you know, a good solid four and a half to five footer. Uh, but Makawi Itsubusa, it just has that tightly layering habit. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's one of those plants that just looks like an animal out there in the landscape. It, it's, it's a, it should be a favorite among everybody. I think everybody, uh, I think everybody should have one of these in their collection. They don't already. Now you probably know this plant here. This is Tamukiyama. Tamukiyama. Turkey Mama. Turkey Mama. And the, the Tamukiyama holds its color real well. Yeah. Uh, this is a Japanese maple that is extremely heat, heat tolerant, time. but it also, at least out two weeks later, right. so it avoids those layers of right. Yeah. Great color on it. Yep. Uh, very nice lace leaf on it. Good fall color on it too, man. It, it's a classic. I mean, it, it's a selection by Kobayashi Mimiji and the same people who brought us Rayusen. And they've introduced so many amazing selections, and Tamukiyama was one of their very first, and still one of their best. Great choice if you're in a really hot southern climate as well. Now, you see this coming up here? You know what that is? Is that summer gold? It is summer gold. Good guess. Easter pomatum summer gold. You know I love the color yellow. Yeah, you love the yellow. You got the yellow dance coming on. <laughs> And Summer Gold Selection by Ghirardelli Nursery in Italy. It can handle the sun once it's established. Make sure a little burn, right. like a one gallon, getting put out the first year. Right. But this thing just brightens up the landscape. Yeah. I mean, you can see how well this contrasts with the Tamukiyama. It just brightens up this part of the landscape and draws your eye to see all the colors out here. I mean, right. you see the different shades you're getting with the Sekimori, the Makawi Atabusa, the Kota Nuito, the Sienkaku back there. I mean, all those different colors are just brought out. All the different shades of green by that. Yeah, place. and what yeah. I love about it, you know, when it leaves out in the spring, it's got that reddish orange margin to the leaf. Oh, yeah. Plus the secondary flushes on it are just fantastic. Uh, it's one of my favorite plants. Oh, definitely. And that's why I've got one over here. And then there's another one back behind the Shisha Gashira we were just looking at in a more shaded situation just to brighten up that darker spot. Right, that's great, man. Yeah. Well, let's go check out some over this way. There's some classics in here. This is actually Crimson Queen. Yeah. And Crimson Queen is this tree was planted in the 1980s here. So this is one of the older trees in the garden. It's one of the very first Japanese maples planted out here that was a cultivar. And behind me is a herbsphere. So this is Acer Circinatum X Palmatum herbsphere. So grows like a weed out here. Loves loves the heat. And this is a very popular one. Fairy lights. Yeah, do you have a fairy lights? I do have a fairy lights. I have one uh, in a container for the last couple of years in front of my front porch. Uh, one I look at every day, I enjoy a lot. Uh, great fall color, holds it for about three weeks. 
I mean, just I love it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the dwarf, so it's so slow. Right. I mean, right. Th we're looking at a tree that's probably a 20 year old tree right. here, and it, it's very compact. We're looking at what is this? Three and a half feet, mm -hmm. probably four and a half five foot wide in 20 years. So I mean, it's it's a it's a true dwarf. It is a good, a dwarf. Good for those fairy gardens. A lot of cool plants around here. Again, as we're coming down through here, right here we've got a tattoo. Right. And tattoo is one of those Makawa family collections. Right. Real slow grower, serrated foliage. But to compare it, over here we've got a Tom Thumb. Right. Tom Thumb is actually a little bit more dwarfier than a tattoo, if I'm not. Yeah, you are. A much slower grower. I mean, those Makawa family collections are some of our most popular trees. But the hardest problem about plants like tattoo, <laughs> like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> and the Tom Thumb is they don't produce a lot of sign wood. <laughs> I got one. I got I got a Tom Thumb actually in a container that I got from y'all a couple years ago. Yeah, man. And this past spring when it leafed out, it actually looked like a thumb with some of the, some of the limbs coming off of it. Yeah, it's got a nice caliper at the bottom now. Great for bonsai, I believe. Yeah, but, but man, love it. Yeah, some really cool plants. As we're coming down through here, this is Trombenberg. And this is an older Trombenberg here. And this is actually a hybrid Shira Solomon. I mean, people don't, it's one of the first ones often listed as a palmatum, but Cor was telling Matt that this is a hybrid that happened with uh, Shira Solomon palmatifolium at Arboretum Kalmut, and then was taken over to a Trombenberg Arboretum where it gets its name. Wow. Yeah, so it's got that cut down foliage just like palmatifolium. Really, really cool tree out in the landscape and garden. Very nice. Well, you want to go check out the other side? Definitely. Let's go. So, guys, we're here starting the lower side yard here. You see a little bit of frost burn on our Peve starfish. We got a large Emini over here on that side. That's a rare type from Europe with real small foliage. And a large Veritas right back here on this side. There's a lot of cool plants in this garden. Like, subscribe, and share, guys. <laughs> Who is that guy? Well, right behind us is Jermaine's gyration. Oh, yeah. So what do you think about Jermaine's gyration? I think, I, think it's, uh, I think it's crazy the way it contorts and gets wide and it, it, it just look, it looks like a monster in the landscape to me. It's, uh, it's really cool, really cool. I, I love it. It's one of the quickest growing green right. lace leaves. It just twists and contorts. It's one of those Japanese maples that you put out there, it's gonna look like a 200 year old specimen really quickly. Right. It's it pretty good size in what, about 10 years? Yeah. And what's the fall color on it? Is it pretty Yellow to oranges. Yellow to oranges. Right? Yellow to oranges on the fall color. Yeah, that this one, man. Looks good, looks great. You know what that is? Is that a moonrise? That's a moonrise. Wow. And that moonrise. I don't even know what to say, guys. This, this is one you should have in your collection, definitely, I think. Uh, I guess the yellows, the oranges, the pinks in the spring. Uh, insane fall color. Insane fall color on it. and uh, it, It's Brian's. It's one of his favorite Japanese yeah, maples. Yeah, I've he's never... Put, keep putting those pinks across it. Right. Those pinks, that's a salmon. That, that lime green color selection by our good friend Carl Munn. I mean, this is an amazing plant. Super heat tolerant. It's been out here in full sun for a number of years. And it's just sort of the thing that ties the landscape together and brings everything together. I've never seen one this big, this moonrise this big up close. It, it's, it's amazing to me. It just kind of puts me in shock. Well, let's go around here and check some of this stuff out. Is this? Sensu. Sensu. I thought that's what this was. Yeah, originally found by Jim Baggett in Oregon, introduced by Talon Buckholz. The original code name on this was JB50 for Jim Baggett's 50th seedling. Right. And... Uh, it's a Shirasaw one that sort of opened up a lot more. Again, this is a seedling from Shirasaw and Palmetifolium. Oh, really? So, you know, that's the parent to Trompenberg, but it's also the parent to Sensu, which then later may have brought us things like Kawhi and all these other cool Acer Shirasaw and hybrids. Yeah, one of my top five right here. I have one in my garden. Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. So we're coming up. We've got a large Acer Japonicum in its pumpkin. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it gives it a pumpkin orange fall color. Right. It's one of those big leaf japonicums. Shout out to Flintlock Hunter, uh, who loves the japonicum types. And this is one of our MS pumpkins. It's been in the ground here for probably about 10 to 15 years. 10 to 15 years. 
Yeah, yeah. Got some really nice size for us yeah. down here. Yeah, that's uh, 10, 15 years. That's impressive. So right here, we've got emerald lace. Okay. And this is a, a really cool weeping green lace leaf, super heat tolerant. Has more of a wonkier spreading yeah. habit than some of the yeah. other lace leaves. But it's, it's very unique and it's, it's worth having. But it's one of the most heat tolerant lace leaves that's out there. Yeah, there's something something about these lace leaf types that they throw kind of an elegance to the landscape. The yeah. way they drape over, you know, like you could plant them on a pond or around a pond, how they weep down. Just something really beautiful about all of them. Uh, emerald lace and the foliage on that, that's, that's pretty crazy to me. Michael, come this way. So what do you think this is? Looks like another lion's head. It is a lion's head. Shishi Kashira. But it's not Shishi Kashira. This is Meiji Shi, the baby lion. Oh. So this is the rarest of the lion's heads. It's the slowest growing version of Shishi Kashira. It, I say version of Shishi Kashira. Version of the, there's Shishi Kashira, which is the, the female lion. Yeah. OG Shi's the male lion. And then Meiji Shi's the baby lion. Oh, okay. And this I, is the baby lion. That's, uh, that's, that's really <laughs> wicked. Yeah, I, so, at first I thought it was another Shishi Gashira. It, we, we do plant plenty of Shishi Gashiras, but this happens to be the what the baby lion. Like the dwarf lion head, maybe? Exactly, the dwarf lion head. Basically, Shishi is a female lion specifically, kind of like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. I guess you'd compare it to in Japanese literature. OG, she would be like Mickey Mouse. And then if they had a baby, that would be Meiji Shi. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's really interesting. So this, any ideas? I don't. Acer palmatum elegance. Elegance, okay. And if you want to know anything about elegance, it is constantly the fall color award winner at Western Burt Arboretum. Western Burt Arboretum is one of the first plantings of Japanese maples in Western civilization. And they have a photo contest every single year. And the crazy wicked colors of just reds infused with greens and yellows and oranges that this gets, there's often a line of people waiting to take photos at Elegance at Western Bird Arboretum because they know there's a good chance they could win. Great fall color. It's got such good fall color. Right. And they've got so many Japanese maples there. I mean, they've got, you know, at least, you know, several hundred Japanese maples in their garden, but Elegance produces some of the best fall color of any of them. What? So, so, so when was this one planted? Uh, this one was planted in 2013. So 2013, it was about a six foot tree in 2013. And we're here in 2023, so 10, was it 10 years? Yeah. So 10 years, got some good size to it now. Very nice. <laughs> now this is Acer Circinatum X Everautum. Everautum. And we say it's Acer Circinatum X. It was often listed as an Acer Palmatum, Palmatum X. Right. Yeah, I knew that. Um, but if you've touched the bark, it's sticky. Uh, if you look at the foliage, it looks like a Circinatum. So a source native has like that characteristic on it? It does, it does. It, it has that, that stickiness to the foliage, it gets some pubescence as it leafs out, and that's exactly what this does. Huh. And so they, they often say palmatum X, the X is hybridized with the vine maple, oh, the that's, a, that's really interesting. But a selection by Dan Himes that he found, and he actually believed it was a seedling from a Moriyama, because it has a very similar branching structure, and I could see that. It could be a more Moriyama X Cercinatum. Hmm. So that's just a, a you know, our guess on what we know from the species, but definitely a pretty cool tree. Yeah, very cool tree. Now, let me show you something down here. Okay. So, Matt and I were uh, going down to try on one day, and we're passing by going to get some pizza at one of our favorite pizza places, and we're like, wait a second, was that a witch's broom? And we found a witch's broom in a coral bark Japanese maple. We named it Cupid because we collected signwood around uh, Valentine's Day and just had that bright red bark. We're like, that's perfect for name for a coral bark. Yeah. But this is one of our first grafts off of Ace of Primate and Cupid. Wow. It's about been in the ground now for right around 10, 12 years. And you see, it's a much slower it growing is, than something like yeah. a Sengukaku or a yeah, Benikawa. It'll be much larger. larger by it'll be time much, much larger. And we trim on this quite a bit, so it does get some exaggerated growth because we are producing a lot of these. Right. But this is one of the very first. Each from Adam Cupid. Oh, that's cool. One of our introductions from the Area 51 collection. That is very cool. Usagumo. This is the Batwing Maple. 
you've all probably seen some of our old classics. If you haven't, go check it out. We've got a classic video where Matt and I are dressed up for Halloween. And Matt's dressed up in a Batman costume, and I'm dressed up in a Spider-Man costume. And Matt's talking about the Batwing Maple. And Usagumo is called the Batwing Maple because it has this leaf that looks like a bat wing. It gets like this coral pink when it first leaves yeah. out, and then it goes straight to a white. Yeah, very like, swirling variegation on it. And man, the fall color. Fall color goes to some yellows and oranges as well. It, it, it does, it does. The bat wing maple, a classic picked them. They're super heat tolerant. They're difficult to produce. Yeah. I mean, a lot of time we have to do some summer production on the pick them maples because we have our best success crafting them during the summer. But the batwing maple is an awesome tree for sure. Now, slow growth rate, medium growth rate on it? Medium. Medium? Medium. It's not super slow like a Makawa, but it does take time to get out there. And it gets fuller and denser, as you can see. And it's handled the sun area quite well. It does go a little greener quicker in full sunlight. If you give it some shade, it'll stay a little whiter color for you a little longer in the season. But a pretty awesome plant. Man, I love this one. One of my top five. So any guess on what this is? Uh... I don't want to guess and be wrong. So. <laughs> so we're dealing with Acer Palmatum Dissectum Judith Ann. Okay, I would never guess that. Judith Ann is a yellow version of Seri. Oh. It's slower growing. It's got a, if you see all the yellow color coming across this, it's the most yellow version of Seri that you could possibly get. Uh, it's a selection by Donnie Tomlin down in Alabama mm -hmm. named after his wife, Judith Ann. You probably saw some of our Natalie's that we had around the nursery. Yeah. That was his daughter. Oh, okay. And uh, Donnie is a maple collector down there in Alabama, and this was just one that he had found and introduced that Matt and I have tried to tried to make more popular here in the nursery trade. Yeah, very cool. Definitely gets a lot more yellow to yeah. it. Yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. It definitely has more of that upright habit. There's not yeah. a, tr a lot of true upright lace leaves, and this one definitely is that, but it definitely gives you some of that yellow color when right, it does it. Right, right, right. You know what this guy is? Uh, is this Hime? Taro Yama. Taro Yama. Yeah. So this is the Taro Yama with that swirling foliage, that dark bark. Kind of in that Makawa, Shishigashira type family. Uh -huh. I mean, it's kind of like in between where you get some curling foliage, but then you also get that tight, dense habit. I mean, it's got a leaf almost the size of the Makawa with that twisting foliage. Almost like a green version of the Kuranajishi almost. I mean, that that's what this one does. It's that tight, compact right, right. shape. Coming up through here on my left here, we've got Acer Truncatum Golden Dragon. So that's one of the Truncatum selections by Metro Maples by Keith Johansson down there in Texas, super heat tolerant. But, you know, a fast growing Truncatum. Right. This would be a great one for like southern climates, heat exposure, sun exposure. Exactly. Fast grower. Exactly. Now fall color on this? Uh, a bright golden yellow. And that's oh. where it gets the name of the Golden Dragon, is that brighter golden yellow color. That bark. Man. Oh yeah, it gets some really nice bark as it ages. And then coming up through here, this looks like a hornbeam, but it's a hornbeam maple. And it's a dwarf selection called Esfeld Select by Corvan Geldrin in Holland. Oh, wow. And so it just stays tight, compact, and it has that hornbeam yeah, leaf does. to it. Uh -huh. But again, this is a maple. Uh, it's, so it's, it's, it's a rarer it's one. It's like, like a weirdo kind. Yeah. It is, it is a very weirdo. So here we've got Acer Palmatum Dissectum Elmwood Spreader. And so this one is a cool one. It gets like a green yellow bark to it. And it's got that weeping style, so that green yellow bark stands out quite a bit. Keep putting on this red growth that matures to green over top of that. And it just has a really large leaf. Yeah. And the leaf is a size of something like a germane's gyration. Right. But it's got this red growth going to that greener color. Yeah. It's one that pretty rare in the nursery trade, but is one that I found out I liked it because it was different. Yeah, it is different. Yeah. One you don't see too often. No, though. definitely not. But, oh, Mila. Oh, yeah, we got to see Mila. So Mila just keeps putting on that colors yeah. all throughout the summer. New growth flushes during the summer. Just keep putting on crazy, wicked colors again. It's one of those ones that's impossible to describe because the, the colors are just unreal. Changing, yeah. yeah. You get some greens on the inside with, like, purple... Or pinks, pink, yeah. and you can't describe it really. Sometimes when it leaves out in the spring, gets kind of an orange, the yellow side. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the growth habit. I like the growth habit on it. It seems, it seems, I don't know, you correct me if I'm wrong, it seems to grow not so much wide, but more upright. Everyone that I've seen, that's the way it typically oh, grows. Oh, okay. 
I hadn't seen that. I hadn't put that as a defining characteristic yet. But every time I've seen one, it's been tall and narrow. Nice. And uh, so you're you're very likely to be right on this habit. But the colors aren't just unreal. Yeah. It's one by our friend Dick Vandermatt in Holland. Right. And Matt and I made it pretty popular here in the United States. Yeah. Because it's it's very different from everything else out there. In the right. Country. Yeah. I picked up one today actually. Uh, my number one pick. My number one out of my top five. Nice. Nice. So, Let's head on in this way. So we're standing here at one of the Acer Palmetto Summer Golds uh, in the shade, so you can see how it brightens up those dark spaces in the garden. Yeah, definitely. And here it's underneath a crepe myrtle. It's underneath Herb's Fear, which is right here, and still giving you some good yellow color in here. But what do you think of this garden? Oh, man, it's uh, first time seeing it. I'm, I'm blown away. I mean so much to look at i don't think i've seen it all you know i think it's something you could come out here every day and see something new yeah, you yeah. live here it's crazy uh thank you for taking me through here hey man it's our pleasure as always smash that like button thank you all so much for watching our videos make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and sign up for our weekly emails on mr maple take care god bless and have a great day